This video is going to have a look at the Python class and Python object and discuss the relationship between both. Before we have a look at a Python class and object, I wish to draw an analogy to the building trade. If you're going to build a property, the first thing you would need is a blueprint. And from this blueprint, you could build a property. So here you can see we've built a house from the blueprint. Of course, using the same blueprint, you can build another property and another one. So these three houses all share something in common. They have all been built from the same blueprint. If we take this a little bit further, however, this analogy, here's the blueprint again. So it's possible to build a property and have it colored red. It's possible to build more or less the same property because it's come from the same blueprint. But on this occasion, we've changed one of its attributes. We've made it a green color. And we could do the same, build the house again, but this time you can see it is actually blue. If we go a little bit further with this analogy, what you can see here is the blueprint was used to produce the house. And the relationship between the blueprint and the house is now effectively broken because the property has finished. If we look at the next property, it's produced from the blueprint and now the house exists in its own right. And here you can see we've built another house and it now exists in its own right. So those arrows that appeared have just disappeared because what we have with the blueprint is something that you cannot walk into and start making your breakfast in the kitchen because it doesn't exist. But when the house exists, you can go into each one or any one of them and go in and cook your breakfast in the kitchen, then go and sit in the living room because they are actually incarnations of the blueprint. They have been produced based on the blueprint, but they exist in their own right. If we now switch to Python and forget about this analogy between a blueprint and a property and have a look at an assignment statement is one here where A is assigned to and A is regarded as being a variable that after the execution of this assignment statement will have the value of 2. But what this assignment statement actually does is produce an object and because it is an object we can ask a question about it what kind of object is it well 2 is an integer so an integer object is created so when this program executes we've seen this before we have this notion of an execution space but outside of the execution space we have an integer class now the integer class and any class for that matter is equivalent to the blueprint that we were looking at a moment ago in the building trade. The integer class is something that will inform the object what it is going to, for want of a better word, look like. So we can see there's going to be a relationship between the integer class and the object. So from the integer class we create the object and I'm showing here to be consistent with previous videos the object as a circular shape existing in the execution space. Now, when the object is created, it will have some attributes. It'll have an ID, and we've seen what an ID is in the previous videos. It has a type, and the type of this particular object we can see is integer, and it's going to have a value, and it's going to have a value of 2. And the reason it's got the value of 2 is because A has been assigned 2. We now label this particular object with the label A. Now the relationship as shown by the arrow I'm removing because what I would like to stress now is that this object exists in the execution space in its own right. In other words, the integer class was the template that allowed the object to be created but once the object is in the execution space, it is its own thing. It is there on its own behalf. It is not actually the class. It was based on the class. So it exists in its own right in the execution space. Assignment statements can be regarded as binding names to values. In this model, the label, in other words, the name, is bound, and we can think of that as being tied, to the object which contains the value. 
let's reflect this particular program onto the model we've just been discussing. When we execute this line, A is assigned to, the following will happen. The execution space will find the integer class helps produce the object, and the object is then labelled A. And we'll see the runtime appear as it does here. When we come onto this line, print the ID of A, well, we locate A, we locate the ID, and that gets printed here. When we come here to print the type of A, we locate the label, we therefore find this value in the type, this is then printed here. When we print A, we locate the label, we locate the value, and that gets printed here. Let's now use the model to explain a program that just has two assignment statements. A is assigned 2 and B is assigned 3. Well, here is A assigned 2. What will happen, we can see we have the execution space. Now, 2 is an integer, so we're going to have an integer class. This integer class will help produce the object which is shown here. And, of course, this object will take up an ID, a type, and the value, which we can see here. We then label this object appropriately. And in this case, obviously, we label it with A, because A has been assigned to. I'm now going to remove the arrow between the integer class and the actual object to emphasize that this object now exists in its own right. It was just based on the integer class. Here we can see B is assigned 3. 3 is clearly an integer. So we're going to have another object that's going to be based on the integer class. So here we can see the object appearing, and of course it's going to have an ID, a type, and a value. And it's B is assigned 3, so we will label this, obviously, with the label B. And then I will remove the arrow between the integer class and this object to emphasize the point that this object now exists in its own right. What we now have are two objects based on the integer class. If we have a look at the ID field for both, we can see that this ID is different to this one here. If we have a look at the value, we can see this value is different to this. So although both of these objects were based on the integer class, we can see that they are slightly different in terms of the fact that their IDs are different and their values are different. But if you look, you can still see they have the same type. Now, this was rather like when we went back and looked at the construction industry. We had the blueprint that produced a red house, a blue one, and a house that was colored green. So what we're saying here, yes, we have two objects. They are both based on the integer class. They share a lot of things in common, but we can see, for example, that these two are different. It's a bit like the houses being different colours. Let's consider this computer program here and let's consider its runtime against the model we've just been discussing. Well the first line is A is assigned to and when this executes the following will happen. We look at the execution space, we use a class, the object comes into existence which we label as A and we can see the object exists in its own right within the execution space. Then we'll come on to this assignment statement. B is assigned 3. And of course, what will happen here? We will get the object created for this particular assignment statement. Now what we need to do, we need to look at the output of this program, which we can see is here. We'll now have a look at what this particular statement does. Well, it's printing the ID of A. So the label is located. The ID is located, and you can see that is printed to the output. When we execute this particular statement, we're printing the type of A, so we locate the label A, we locate the type, and we can see that's displayed at the output. We then print A, so we locate the label A. This is the value of A that gets printed here. And now, of course, we come on to these three program statements, which are all to do with B. So when we have a look at this one, print the ID of B, then we locate the label. 
this is the ID and of course that gets printed here then we print the type of B so we locate the label we get at the type and that gets printed here and then the last statement print B we locate the label this is the value of B which gets printed here let's now consider this computer program here now it is almost identical to the one we've just been looking at however this line here we can see has been changed previously it said B assigned 3 and now we can see it's saying B is assigned 2 so let's now go through the program one line at a time ie single step and have a look at its execution against the model so the first line is A is assigned 2 and what this will do it'll create the appropriate object as we've already seen and this object is labeled A now we go into this line which says B is assigned 2 now what Python does in these circumstances it doesn't create another object the reason being is the object that's already in existence has the value of 2 which we can see here so what Python does is to save if you like execution space it says well I'm going to use this object I've already can see there's a 2 in it so I'm going to use that one so what it does it labels this object that already exists with the label B so now we have an object that has two labels attached to it consequently the output from this program will be as shown here so when we come on to this particular line of code print the ID of A we locate the label we get at the ID and it gets printed to the screen when we print the type of A we locate the label we get at the type that's printed to the screen when we now print A we get at the label we get at the value which is printed to the screen now we come to this which is printing the ID of B so we locate the label it gets at the ID and it puts it here and of course it's got at the same ID as what label A was attached to so when we come to here now we print the type of B we locate the label we get at the type we put it to the screen then when we print B we get at the label we locate the value and the value is then printed to the screen so if we look at the output here and here we can see they're the same and that's because A and B are effectively attached to the same object well not effectively they clearly are as you can see from the animation let's now consider the following computer program and here you can see the first line is saying A is assigned 9.81 now 9.81 is clearly a float in Python so what will happen when this particular line executes an object will be created so we need to consider the execution space and an object is going to be created within this execution space but on this occasion we're going to be using a different class called the float class so the float class will help create the object that this assignment statement requires so from the float class we will get the object created and of course this particular object will have an appropriate ID it'll have a type and it will have a value now we can see that the type is in fact float and we can see that the value is indeed a float but in all other respects this is like the integer class we've just been producing it had an ID it had a type and it had a value but on this occasion we can see that the type is float and clearly the value is a float but what will happen is this will now be labeled as a and I remove that arrow now to emphasize the fact that this particular object exists in its own right within the execution space now the output from this particular program is shown here so we can see that when we come to print the ID of a then we clearly locate the label this is the ID it gets printed to the screen we then execute this statement print the type of a we locate the label this is the type it gets displayed here then we print a we locate the label we get at the value and that value is printed here 
Let's now consider the following computer program here. And if we look at the first line, it's saying my underscore string equals spam spam. And we can see the spam spam is within quotes. Now that tells us that is a string. Consequently, when we look at the execution space, what we're going to have is an object in here and this object is going to be based on the string class so here we can see the object being created and we have got within it the ID the type and the value and you can clearly see that the type is str which is an abbreviation for string we now label this object with my string because that's the identifier of the variable as it appeared in the assignment statement we now remove that arrow to emphasize the point that this object now exists within its own right in the execution space. This is the output from the program. So let's have a look at what happens when we execute this line, print the ID of my string. Well, we access this particular label, we get at the ID, and the ID is printed here. Then we come onto this program, print the type of my string, we locate the label, we get at the type and we put the type to the screen. We then come onto this line, print my string, we get the label, we get at this value and this value is printed to the screen as you can see here. So this video has shown us how to create an integer object, a float object and a string object. Check out the supporting website for these videos and also consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and get an automatic update every time I upload a new video. Also consider subscribing to the Google Plus Circle that relates to these videos.